Hi, I'm Art. I'm BenQ Global Ambassador, and I'm here with my really great friend, Dr. Chris Bai. Hi, I'm Chris Bai. I'm actually on um, BenQ Color Scientist, and also I'm the manager of the Color Technology Lab. I'm also great to here to have this new launch of the PD2730S. So um, let's talk about it, why we're having to introduce this model and why we're doing this introduction of the uh, Display Color Talk solution to you. First of all, when we actually um, get the two same new models, like um, with the two different units, it's really possible that you get a li little bit different color um, appearance, all of these two units, even if it's brand new from the factory. Um, this is absolutely normal because, you know, human vision is very, very complicated and very sensitive. So even a little bit tiny difference that even is not measurable at all, you will spot the difference. That's why we developed this solution. It's catered to your eyes that without using a calibrator, you can actually using your eyes to actually adjust the monitors to be sort of consistent across the two monitors you're using. So how we do that, I'll let Art tell you how we using this piece of software called Display Color Talk. So with Display Color Talk, there are a few things to note. With this version running on a Mac, you have two options. You have the option to do a matching between two BenQ PD displays, or you have the option to do a matching between a MacBook, MacBook Pro internable in screen to a BenQ display. Now, the reason why BenQ do this is because with Mac, there's really a finite number of screens. There's only so many laptops that they make and it's much easier for them to really control their parameters and really get a good color match from that. If you're on the PC side of things, you're only going to see matching between BenQ to BenQ. This is not something to panic, it's just a design that they really thought through because in PC market, there are so many different type of displays out there that makes it very difficult to match and different quality of displays because these are really sitting at the top in terms of panel quality. So the Mac is doing the same thing and makes it much easier. So what we're gonna do is choose BenQ to BenQ and we'll simply click on start with display color top. Next thing we're going to do is start the binding process. With this, we'll click on start the binding. And what you have to do is pick the display you want to use as a reference. In this situation, I'm going to use the left display as a reference. So this will be my benchmark display. I'm going to drag this other fine tune display window to the other display that I have here. This is going to be the one that I'm going to do the adjustment on. Now you can move this window for the adjustment you know, have it on either side. What I'm gonna do is move it here. This way is a little bit easier for me to, to see the adjustment on this panel in reference to this one. So from there, what I'm gonna do is click on bind on each one. What it's gonna do is grab the model number for the display by the information that the display is sending to the operating system. And we're also going to bind the other display. Once it's done, it's gonna say the binding process is complete. We'll click on next. And this is going to give me a report in terms of like, hey, this is my display. It's going to talk with the display OSD. That is the display menu, the settings in the display is going to communicate directly with it, which is the reason why you saw this display kind of blank a little bit, where this one, it didn't do that because this is our reference model. Now, this is a process that it's kind of similar to, you know, a full calibration where it goes in and talk with the display, but this is based on our human vision. So now that we have everything ready to go what we're going to do is click on next and this is where we start the process so we have color patches that we need to look at and also a picture this is the part where depending on your workflow you need to decide what you're going to look at if you're trying to do the color matching with every single element in here it's not going to work so you really need to decide if you are a designer our recommendation is to look at the color patches. This way you can see how the colors are matching up based on the patches you're using. However, if you do any other type of creative work that involves a lot of skin tone, the recommendation is to look at the picture itself, but not so, not so much just the picture, but rather the skin tone of the person in the picture, because many of them will have a person with a skin tone in there. And if, as long as you can match the skin tone fairly closely, that's the goal, what you want to do. Now for the white point adjustment, we have a lot of things that we can do here. We can change the brightness, we can change the color temperature. The recommendation from Chris Color Lab is to do the color temperature first. If you have done an RGB gain adjustment on your display before, you will note that when you start to change the RGB gain, a lot of time it changes the display brightness. So if you try to match the brightness first, you go in and change the RGB color gain, you're gonna sometime dim down the display or make it brighter. So make the brightness the last thing you do before you continue on and click on next. So what we're gonna do right now is compare these two displays. So remember our left one is the reference, the right one is the one we're adjusting you. This is way too much magenta. And this is pretty much 
a color correction process very similar to that of in Lightroom, in Photoshop, where you're really trying to match colors. So for these, what I'm gonna do right now is pretty much add more green because this is way too magenta right now. So I'm gonna do this. And a couple of things to realize here is that you don't wanna go click, 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 like super fast. The reason why is because this software is talking to the display OSD. It's making the adjustment in real time, but it does take a moment for it to catch up. So just go through it fairly slowly and you'll be fine. And you can see the colors are starting to adjust now. We're starting to get, I would say, white that are a lot closer, although we're not there yet. And I also need to go in and reduce the red a little bit further to match it with our reference display. So I'm gonna do that right now. And another thing that I want to hint too is rather than standing on the side, like the way how I am now, even though these are IPS panel that has an amazing angle view, you kind of want to be looking at them right from the center point. The reason why is because we see IPS panel from the side a little bit different. Our eyes perceive color a little bit different. Even though the angle of view is wide, it doesn't mean we're going to see fully the same, right? So every time you work in front of our computer, we're always in the front of it, directly in the front. So that's just something to remember there. Getting there. <clears throat> getting there, right? Yeah. So we're getting closer. We're gonna add a little bit more blue this time around. I really think that, to me, looks pretty close. Yeah. Brightness, what do you think, Chris? I think I just touch a little bit higher. Little higher. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do about maybe there, yeah. I think. Uh, Remember, these are minor adjustments. You don't have to go do drastic and make it <clears throat> totally different. If you want to do that, you can, but you don't need to. Once this process is complete, the next thing is the six axis color adjustment. This is really cool. So with this, remember, the first time you're doing this, you're going to be deciding whether you're looking at the color patches because our eyes go to the largest, highest contrast area in the scene. And then that happens to be the red color patches right now. But if we're doing this for skin tone and we are doing this for skin tone right now, what we want to do is compare the model skin tone in these two pictures. If you're not sure which direction to go, there's that little round arrow right there, just reset it. If you've gone too far, just reset it. If you're not really sure, you can just drag it up like that and that looks awful, but simply just reset it. This is one of those great learning tools that you have in this program too, about color matching. Yeah. So beyond just adjusting display, you can use this tool to learn about color. What happened when I change the hue? What happens when I go in and change the saturation? It doesn't look good, but I'm learning in the process. You won't break the the monitor at all. Exactly. Already. You're just really making software adjustments to this, right? So it's just something to realize there. And something to realize too is that the numbers for this specific panel pair with this one is gonna be different than if I rotate them around. So if I switch these around, the numbers are gonna be different. If I use another BenQ model, it's going to be different. Don't take these numbers absolute, take it as the way how you're seeing it. Your vision is processing this. We're gonna go to the next color, cyan. Cyan's pretty close here. And if you think they're pretty close, they look just about right, you can just simply go to the next color. By the way, you can always go to the previous color if you need to. And at the end, there's a way for you to jump to each individual color again. So it's not so much that you go forward and you can't go back. You can always go back to make adjustment at any given time. If they're close to your human vision, that's perfectly fine. But this is now the six color axis, the conclusion to all of this. So we see all these different colors. You can see them side by side there in this comparison. If you don't like a certain color or you think they're a little bit off from each other, you can simply go in and click, for instance, cyan, and it will actually pull the screen up and you can make minor adjustment to this as necessary. Now, do note that when you're at this last stage, there's no master reset. The reason why is because these color corrections are not just a one and done thing. You adjust one color, it affects the other. So if you reset this one, it's gonna drastically affect the way how the display is showing color overall, which is the reason why they did not put that reset function into this one. So anything from here on, it's really a minor fine tune to just get it to where you want it to be. So yeah, that's pretty much display color talk on BenQ brand new 5K display in the PD lineup. Really cool stuff. I hope that you learn from this. Actually encourage people to actually use it because mm -hmm. uh, like I said before, even though we use uh, a lot of like a, a measuring tool and a lot of like a algorithm, like a very sophisticated algorithm to fine tune our panels like at a factory, but there's also like lots of variables in here to affecting the human visual system. So everybody sees color differently. 
So with your own eyes, you can adjust the, these two monitors to um, to the same degrees of like uh, consistency that to your liking. I think this is a wonderful job that um, we can do provide as a solution for you to use.